Good morning and welcome to our celebration. Please rise as we sing and pray on this Tuesday of the 15th week. Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. My brothers and sisters, today we celebrate the feast of St. Henry II, died the year 1024, together with his wife, St. Cunegonde, on March the 3rd, assisted the poor as emperor, he respected the church's freedom fostering ecclesiastical and monastic reform, founded the See of Bamberg as a center of missions to the Slavs. He is a patron saint of the Benedictine Oblates. So today we thank St. Henry II for the life that he lived and the life that he inspires us to live. My brothers and sisters, as we gather together to prepare to celebrate this mystery of God's love, let us call to mind our own failures, asking our Lord for peace and pardon. You were sent to the contrite, Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. You came to call sinners, Christ have mercy. Christ have mercy. You plead for us at the right hand of the Father, Lord have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. O oh God, whose abundant grace prepared St. Henry to be raised by you in a wonderful way from the cares of earthly rule to heavenly realms, grant, we pray, through his intercession, that amid the uncertainties of this world, we may hasten towards you with minds made pure. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated. A reading from the book of Exodus. A certain man of the house of Levi married a Levite woman who conceived and bore a son. Seeing that he was a goodly child, she hid him for three months. When she could hide him no longer, she took a papyrus basket, daubed it with bitumen and pitch and putting the child in it, placed it among the reeds on the river bank. His sister stationed herself at a distance to find out what would happen to him. Pharaoh's daughter came down to the river to bathe while her maids walked along the river bank. Noticing the basket among the reeds, she sent her handmaid to fetch it. On opening it, she looked, and lo, there was a baby boy crying. She moved with pity for him and said, It is one of the Hebrews' children. Then his sister asked Pharaoh's daughter, Shall I go and call one of the Hebrew women to nurse the child for you? Yes, do so, she answered. So the maiden went and called the child's own mother. Pharaoh's daughter said to her, Take this child and nurse it for me, 
and I will repay you. The woman therefore took the child and nursed it. When the child grew, she brought him to Pharaoh's daughter, who adopted him as her son and called him Moses. For she said, I drew him out of the water. On one occasion after Moses had grown up, when he visited his kinsmen and witnessed their forced labor, he saw an Egyptian striking a Hebrew, one of his own kinsmen. Looking about and seeing no one, he slew the Egyptian and hid him in the sand. The next day he went out again, and now two Hebrews were fighting. So he asked the culprit, why are you striking your fellow Hebrew? But the culprit replied, who has appointed you ruler and judge over us? Are you thinking of killing me as you killed the Egyptian? Then Moses became afraid and thought, the affair must certainly be known. Pharaoh too heard of the affair and sought to put Moses to death. But Moses fled before him but Moses fled from him and stayed in the land of Midian. The word of the Lord. Response. Turn to the Lord in your need and you will live. Turn to the Lord in your need and you will live. I am sunk in the abysmal swamp where there is no foothold. I have reached the watery depths. The flood overwhelms me. Turn to the Lord in your need, and you will live. But I pray to you, O Lord, for the time of your favor, O God. In your great kindness, answer me with your constant help. Turn to the Lord in your need, and you will live. But I am afflicted and in pain. Let your saving help, O God, protect me. I will praise the name of God in song and I will glorify him with thanksgiving. Turn to the Lord in your need, and you will live. See, you lowly ones, and be glad. You who seek God, may your hearts revive, for the Lord hears the poor, and his own who are in bonds he spurns not. Turn to the Lord in your need, and you will live. Today you hear his voice, harden not your hearts. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus began to reproach the towns where most of his mighty deeds had been done, since they had not repented. Woe to you, Chorazin! Woe to you, Bethesda! For the, if you, the mighty deeds done in your midst had been done in Tyre and Sidon, they would long ago have repented in sackcloth and ashes. But I tell you, it will be more tolerable for Tyre and Sidon on the day of judgment than for you. And for you, Capernaum, will you be exalted to heaven? You will go down to the nether world. For if the mighty deeds done in your midst had been done in Sodom, it would have remained until this day. But I tell you, it will be more tolerable for the land of Sodom on the day of judgment than for you. The Gospel of the Lord. To you, Lord Woe to you, the people of Bethesda. Woe to you, you know, the people of Sodom. 
Jesus, whenever he starts throwing out the woes, you know he's not happy, okay? Woe to you. Everybody starts ducking, okay? He's, he's not talking about me. He's talking about this guy over here, okay? Because nobody wants to be woe to, right? Woe to you people because I've already been here before. We've been here before. And we still haven't repented. That's how, that's how the beginning begins. Jesus comes to the people that he had already been there, and yet they're still doing the things that they're not supposed to be doing. They have not repented, and he's angry. Why? Because he wants everybody to be saved. He's doing it out of love. I always tell parents, when you get angry with your children, you know, the... Do you do the spank rule or the no spank rule? Okay, that's always a, when I'm talking to couples that are, that are getting married. Do you believe in the spank rule or the no spank rule? Because the spank rule, some of the, well, that's how I was disciplined. And I, I'm used to being spanked, and that's what kept me in line. So I think we need to spank our children. And then on the other hand, that's abuse. You can't hit your child. You can't touch your child. You're, you're hurting them. My favorite line is, this is going to hurt me more than it hurts you. We all like that one, right? You know, but, but why, why are you having a big smile on your face, Dad? You know, I, lo I love that image. And, uh, but, but why, right? Why do we, dis how do we discipline our children? How did Jesus discipline the people? Always out of love. Love. That's where... The, the, it's got to come from. The motive always has to be from love. Jesus, yes, he's upset. Woe to you. Woe to you out there who I've already talked to and still haven't repented. If you're not going to repent, it's going to happen to Sodom and Gomorrah. It's going to happen to you. So woe to you, which you better get your act back into shape, you guys. I'm, I'm not going to keep coming back here and telling you this. That's very similar to Paul's, right? Why did Paul write all those letters to the Romans, to the Thessalonians, to the, to the Ephesians, to the Galatians? Why? Because he cared about them. And he says, I've already been there. One of my favorite lines, you stupid Galatians. It's actually in the Bible, by the way. It's not Father Eric uh, ab-libbing this. You stupid Galatians. What's wrong with you? I've, we've already talked about this. We've been there. And you know what? In Paul's time, he didn't know when the second coming was going to happen. He was, there was a sense of urgency. We just don't know. It could happen tomorrow. So you guys, if you haven't repented yet, you better repent because there may not be a tomorrow. There's a sense of urgency. Jesus is sending that sense of urgency because he loves us because he cares about us, because he wants all of us to taste the fruits of our labor in the kingdom of God. Woe to you. Amen? Amen. Please stand for the prayers of the faithful. My brothers and sisters, let us bring our petitions to our Heavenly Father, confidence of His love and power. For the Church, may her sacramental life continue to empower all to live as witnesses to the truth. We pray to the Lord. For nations devastated by war and food shortages, may the Lord of heaven and earth bring healing restoration, and peace, we pray to the Lord. For all who struggle with difficult life decisions, may God's love and wisdom bring them clarity and peace of mind, we pray to the Lord. For this faith community, may the Lord increase in us a spirit of repentance wherever necessary, and bless us with his mercy, we pray to the Lord. For our beloved departed, today we remember Frank Lecoq, 
Wilson McKinney, and Andrea Garza Guerrero. May they rest in peace, we pray to the Lord. And for our own intentions that we hold in the silence of our hearts. We pray to the Lord. And together let us pray this prayer to St. Michael. St. Michael, the archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the malice and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do you, O Prince of the heavenly host, by the divine power thrust into hell Satan and all evil spirits, who prowl about the world, seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. Father in heaven, we thank you for your great love for us. Please hear and answer these prayers of your sons and daughters. We ask this to your son, Jesus, who lives and reigns forever and ever. my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and good of all his souls. Look upon the offerings of the church, O Lord, as she makes her prayer to you, and grant that when consumed by those who believe, they may bring ever greater holiness through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For in goodness you created us, and we were justly condemned. In mercy you redeemed us through Christ our Lord. Through him, the angels praise your majesty. Dominions adore and powers tremble before you. Heaven and the virtues of heaven and the blessed seraphim worship together with exaltation. May our voices, we pray, join with theirs in humble praise as we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall so that they may become for us the body and blood of your Son, our Lord, Jesus Christ. 
the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion. He took bread and giving thanks, broke it, gave it to his disciples saying, take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples saying, take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, and Gustavo, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages. We may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him in wisdom and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. As we stand together with faith and confidence in eternal life, at the Savior's command informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Let us offer each other a sign of peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, 
you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. Once again, just a reminder, if you're not receiving communion, we still invite you to come forward for a blessing by simply putting your arms across your chest. Myself and the minister will give you a blessing. Thank you for your patience and your participation during this time of the pandemic. Body of Christ. act of spiritual communion for our brothers and sisters who are not able to join us and we pray my Jesus I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament I love you above all things and I desire to receive you into my soul since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally come at least spiritually into my heart I embrace you as if you were already there, and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Let us pray. Having consumed these gifts, we pray, O Lord, that by our participation in this mystery, its saving effects upon us may grow through Christ 
our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The celebration is ended. Let us now go in peace to love and serve the Lord and one another. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God.